Woo! Hello there! <laughs> we are back! I have been on a little hiatus and I'm gonna talk about it, but I just wanted you guys to know since it has been a while since I filmed a video, and this is my first video in, in quite a few months, um, I am a little bit awkward, okay? It did take me a little bit to warm up, so I just wanted you to be aware of that. Let's go! Long time no mother effing see. <laughs> Your girl has been on a very long hiatus, like the longest hiatus I've ever been on since I've been doing YouTube, I think. And so, honestly, I have been swimming in the void. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm someone that I swear I go through like a dark night of the soul every single year, okay? I literally did not know who I was for a long time. Like, I was very confused. And honestly, as I'm sure many of you watching this can relate, times have been fucking hard. Okay, and there's a lot of chaos going on right now. I may do a whole separate video on like where I've been and what the hell I went through if anybody cares, but for now, let's get into this Pisces full moon eclipse. It's a very interesting one. It is a bit of a, a peek into the future, if you will. There are definitely energies that are coming up for this full moon that you really wanna pay attention to because they're showing us what's to come. This is a very futuristic full moon and it's not really a simple one either this is a very complex a complex astrological event that we're having and it's bringing up a lot it can feel quite like a test of faith the key here is to really surrender to faith over fear and there's a lot of fear right now in the world so i could ramble on forever <laughs> it's been a while since i've done this so just bear with me but basically let's start where we always do what the fuck is a full moon <laughs> so a full moon is when the sun and the moon are opposite of each other they're on opposite ends of the earth from our perspective a full moon eclipse is basically when the moon and the sun are near the north and south node okay and the nodes are very special placements they deal with fate karma they are calculated by the moon's orbit so the nodes have been transiting the signs of aries and libra but they are getting close to finishing up these transits right so and this is why we have a pisces full moon that is an eclipse because the actual node in Aries, uh, which is the next sign after Pisces, is towards the beginning of Aries. So the moon is close enough by degree to be a full moon eclipse, right? To be a lunar eclipse. So that is why this particular full moon is an eclipse. Now, what is an eclipse? An eclipse is a, uh, a full moon or a new moon that is way, way more amplified. Eclipses really deal with faded and karmic beginnings, endings, peak moments in our lives. They often correlate with uh, major changes or major upheaval in our lives, like big disruptions that can come and kind of change the course of things in our lives, right? Or can kind of bring in new things or kind of wrap up old things, right? So this lunar eclipse um, in Pisces is very much about bringing things to light because a full moon um, is always about bringing things to light, right? This is why we can see the moon very bright in the sky around the time of a full moon. We can see you know, with the moon lit up in the sky, we can see things that normally we couldn't see in the before, right? It kind of lights up the darkness, right? So things that we previously were not aware of, we become aware of on a full moon, okay? And so with it being an eclipse on top of that, these things are going to be very karmic, very amplified, very emotional, right? It's going to really show us things that maybe we haven't been aware of and these things are going to be a very very big deal because it's an eclipse basically right so the next thing that we really want to look at to figure out what this eclipse could be about or could bring up in our lives is where this eclipse is happening so what sign it is in and the sign that it's in is the sign of pisces pisces is the last sign of the zodiac so it deals with endings it deals with fate it deals with other realms it deals with uh releasing things surrendering to things right it's kind of like the the end of the road right it's kind of this energy of transcending uh, one season of our lives or transcending something in our lives and moving beyond it, seeing beyond it. Pisces is a water sign. So, you know, because the moon is going to be in a water sign, this is going to bring up a lot of emotion, a lot of intuition, a lot of creativity, a lot of energy, right? Pisces is a very energetic sign. So energetically, this is going to be a very intense lunar eclipse. Now, Pisces is a sign 
because of those reasons, also deals with faith. It also deals with our belief, right? Pisces is ruled by Jupiter and traditional astrology, which is what I use and go by. And so therefore, it is about wisdom. Because it is the last sign of the zodiac, it's like, what have you learned? What is the wisdom of this situation? Um, what wisdom are you gaining? What do you believe, right? There is some kind of light at the end of the tunnel. Can you transcend beyond the physical circumstances beyond what you can see, feel, and touch in your reality? Can you still hold on to hope and belief and faith even when your physical reality with the sun in Virgo, opposite of the moon in Pisces, and Virgo is the opposite sign of Pisces, like, can you let go of these physical things in your life, you know, and the stories that you have around them that are kind of contributing to maybe a test of faith? or a test of your belief, right? So this is about really kind of surrendering to some something to do with your faith, something to do with your divinity, like really surrendering to kind of some kind of higher, higher spiritual kind of thing, right? And I say this because Saturn is involved. The moon is going to cross Saturn on its way to becoming, you know, on its way to building into this uh, beautiful lunar eclipse. Saturn can really definitely be, you know, a test of faith, especially in Pisces. It can feel like a restriction of faith or it can show us where we have been too rigid in our beliefs or where we've lack, you know, where we've been lacking um, in our faith, right? Pisces also deals with our dreams. So our dreams can really bring in a lot of messages, a lot of um, symbolism. You know, our dreams can really, really be heightened around this time period as well. Now, the moon is also going to be conjunct the planet Neptune, which is a very dreamy, celestial energy as well. The planet Neptune really deals with our dreams and our faith as well. It really deals with um, surrender and moving beyond, seeing beyond, right? The Pisces archetype is, you know, two fish, right? Swimming in opposite directions. And it's, it's really about moving beyond duality, moving beyond the kind of black and white thinking, right? It's kind of this energy of transcending what normally keeps us in ego. This person's right. This person's wrong. This is right. This is wrong, right? And from a higher perspective, really, it's all just a dance. It's all exactly where it's meant to be, right? We can kind of see the the meaning in everything. We can kind of see the beauty in everything. You know, Pisces is really a sign. Jupiter Jupiter ruling Pisces and Sagittarius, like Sagittarius is about action oriented experience and wisdom. So like you climb a mountain or you travel the world and you do, you do things which then gains you experience in those things that you're doing, right? Pisces, you know, Jupiter's other sign being a water sign, a feminine sign, an internal sign is more about wisdom from within. It's about tapping into your own inner God, tapping into your own inner divinity, rather than allowing the world to dictate what you believe, who you believe, where you're going, what you're doing, et cetera, et cetera. Years ago, I had this dream and it was kind of like a, a prophetic message. It felt like it came from like a higher, a higher being and this higher being was yelling at me <laughs> in my dream. And this dream really reminds me of this particular Pisces full moon lunar eclipse. So this being was yelling at me and he was telling me that the human perception of God is flawed. And I kept asking him, like, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? And he told me that it, he kind of sounded like a he in my dreams. So that's why I'm calling him a he. But he told me that the human perception of God is very narrow and very egotistical. It's kind of built by the human ego, right? And he was saying that until humans understand that God is everything, right? The worst of the worst. And in this vision, in my dream, I started seeing, you know, horrible things, you know, war and um, poverty and, you know, just all of the, the darkness in the world, right? Um, and, you know, this person was telling me, until we can understand that God is the worst of the worst, um, the ugliest of the ugliest, and the best of the best. And then, you know, my vision switched to like miracles, you know, like miracles that happen, like people that are on their deathbed. And then all of a sudden, you know, like 
end up being able to heal themselves or like heal from a debilitating disease. The best of the best, like the, the best of, of mankind, right? And so he was telling me that until humans are able to see that all of this is God, right, then we are only going to have a very limited perception, right? I think that this full moon is really about coming back to our sense of divinity, our sense of spirituality, our sense of what feels right for us and what feels good to us emotionally, and what in our lives is not really aligning with our spiritual vision, our spiritual morals, our spirituality, right? This, this full moon can be very much about purification, detoxing, cleansing, getting rid of old baggage that is affecting us energetically in our lives. What are we, what are we consuming, right, in our lives um, that is not helpful, right, that is actually potentially toxic or that is actually kind of um, draining our energy, so to speak, right? So the reason I say this is because this full moon is squaring Jupiter, and Jupiter is the ruler of this full moon, and Jupiter is in Gemini, right? So this full moon is really bringing up duality. This full moon is really bringing up polarity, contradictions, hypocrisy, illusions that we've been under, right? You could even say spells. Like, I've been noticing this this huge theme lately of, like, spells that we've been under, whether by, you know, what the world wants us to think or what other people want us to think or social media wants you to think. So it's like we're really disconnected from the truth. And something that I really have seen within my own life and within myself is you can feel truth when you are spiritually aligned and spiritually connected. Like it's it's so there there are certain spiritual truths that exist. There are certain spiritual principles that exist that are easy to define and easy to spot when you are open and when you are aware, when you are aligned within your own being. But when you're not, you become fooled. You become almost spellbound. And then we live under this delusion. Things start going wrong or we, you know, it, it, it evokes these emotions of anger or frustration or fear or powerlessness. And this full moon, you know, there's a lot that we can feel powerless over right now in the world right, with, with the political climate, with um, the social climate, with all of the division in this world, it's like, what do you want to stand for, right? There's a lot that, you know, we can feel powerless over, and I find that sometimes powerlessness is an addiction, because we can live in this victim consciousness that really kind of is also like a spell, you know, I, I was just in it for, for months, you know, and when I was in it, it's like, even though I realized I was in it, it just felt like it just kept sucking me in, right? And it's like, we feel like we're a victim to the universe or to life or to, you know, other people or whatever. And it's like, anytime we blame things outside of ourselves, right, we really are giving up our own sense of sovereignty and power. The truth is, is that when we blame others or want others to change or are waiting on our outside circumstances or other people to change in any way for us to actually change ourselves, we are basically giving our power away. We are basically saying that we're powerless, right? And so I think that this Pisces eclipse, this Pisces full moon eclipse is really bringing in a sense of getting back to our own personal truth, right? Like letting go of the things that we are powerless over in the world or in our own personal lives and keeping the faith because the only medicine for fear really is faith. When we are in our divinity, when we are aligned spiritually, we know that there is something else that has our back. We know that everything is going to be okay in one way or another. I know like the times in my life where I am the most aligned spiritually and the most tapped into my spirituality and my faith are the times in life where I have the least amount of fear, right? 
it's the times in life where I do the best. I prosper the best. I thrive the most during those times because I'm not carrying the, the fear, the burden of fear on my back, <laughs> you know, whether it be for other people or the world at large, etc. So this is a time, you know, this can be even like a calling for some to really anchor into and ground into your faith and your spiritual beliefs rather than to succumb to hopelessness, succumb to powerlessness. Sometimes we do have to succumb to those things to kind of get grounded again in what we do have power over, what we do, um, you know, so we can come back to ourselves instead of focusing on and giving so much energy to the things that we have no control over. Like, what else are you going to do with the things that you have no control over? You have to kind of leave it up to the universe. God your higher power, whatever you believe in, Buddha, I don't care, right? Like whatever you believe in, that's what you leave it up to. So this full moon can kind of bring in this sense of like, where's our faith? Are we putting our faith in action? Or are we succumbing to things that we're powerless over, that we have no control over? Are we allowing things to divide us on an egoic level? Or are we seeing the bigger picture? Are we seeing how everything is kind of a dance? Where are we allowing other things outside of us to dictate our sense of fear, our senses, period, right? So this is about finding the high priestess within you. This is about finding the goddess within you. This is about finding the divinity within again. Going within and listening to your own inner truth, listening to your own intuition, listening to your own inner wisdom, and realigning with that. Because nothing outside of you is going to really point you to the truth, point you to a sense of peace and stability and calm and security and faith that all happens within you. This is about realigning with your own inner guru, your own inner healer, your own inner teacher, your own inner wisdom, rather than seeking it outside and allowing the things outside of you to dictate how you feel and what you believe and, and the actions that you take and, and all of that. This is a very intense time. It's a very triggering time. Mars is, is coming into its square with the nodes, really showing us where we have been triggered emotionally and wherever we feel triggered is really information showing you where you are pretty much giving your energy away, giving your power away. It's where you have inner work to do still. And that doesn't mean that it's bad or you're bad or whatever. We all get triggered. But these things that come up, there's a deeper truth there. It's like what, what action or what story, what belief is actually going to grow you as a person more and help you find out more about you? Is it a lower level belief like, oh, people that do this are X or people that do that are Y or I'm right and you're wrong or they're wrong and I'm right, etc. Dividing ourselves through ego. Is that really going to help you grow? Is blaming other things outside of you going to help you grow and find out more about who you are and uncover more of what you're capable of and your potential? Likely not, right? So it's like, Right now can be a very intense time with Mars being in, you know, a T-square with the nodes of fate and karma showing us where we have an inner sense of restlessness emotionally or with family, with those that we care about. Jupiter being in a T-square with this particular Pisces lunar eclipse showing us where we have not been seeing the higher truths, where we've been distracted by maybe other people's opinions and what other people tell us and, you know, information that is intentionally upsetting. Where have we been ignoring the truth? 
to believe a lie or to believe something that may be easier to believe. Venus is in the sign of Libra, opposite Chiron and Aries. This is also showing us where we have been overcompromising our wants, our interests, things that we like or don't like for the sake of others, for the sake of relationships, where we have certain wounds and sore spots with doing what's best for us rather than what's, you know, best for others. This can really be, you know, a time where, where we also have kind of some triggers coming up in terms of relationships, other people kind of reflecting back to us things about ourselves. Venus is also coming into a square with Pluto. It's definitely a time where <laughs> things are intense and can be triggering. And I think it's like, again, really getting in touch with our own inner wisdom, our own inner truth, rather than what what we're shown externally or what the people around us say or, you know, what the people online say or whatever, right? Like, it's definitely a very heated time. It's, it's awakening us in a very strong way. We also have a kite coming from the sun, trining Uranus, trining Pluto, and then pointing to Neptune and this eclipse. This really tells me that Neptune and this lunar eclipse have a really, really, really big message here that they're bringing us, a very big spiritual message. And there could be miracles happening for this particular eclipse. It would not surprise me at all. There's some kind of divine plan that is happening, some kind of divine order. And if we get lost in narrow-mindedness, we may miss it. We have to see beyond. We have to find a way to reconcile Earth, Virgo energy, being detail-oriented and focusing on the little things with water, Pisces energy, letting go of the things that we cannot control, surrendering the things that we cannot control, believing in something greater than ourselves, seeing the divinity within our lives, coming back to our own spiritual truth, our own spiritual principles, our own spiritual wisdom. This is a full moon eclipse where you can either look for the hope, look for the faith, look for the, the miracles, look for the synchronicities, look for the spirituality, see the divine in everything, or you can look at it through a different lens, a very rigid lens where you choose to not see any of that. Maybe you choose to see the hatred, maybe you choose to see the triggers, maybe you choose to, to focus on the powerlessness and what's missing and what you're lacking and other people and what they're saying and, and, and the drama of it all. There's something very, very profound that I learned in 2021 where similar things were happening. Things were very divisive. One of my biggest values and the thing that I always come back to and believe in is freedom. Freedom. And I truly, truly feel like and, and learned in 2021 that when we focus on all the bad, which is really easy to do, right? With today's, today's climate, it's really easy to focus on all the bad and all the stuff that people are saying and all the bad stuff that people are saying and all the, the stuff that people are talking about and people telling you that this is bad and this is bad and, and you know, yada, yada, yada. It's like really easy to focus on that, but all that does is put you into a state of fear. Now, I'm not talking about bypassing the truth because we're scared, right? There's That's a whole different topic, right? And I believe that does go into this as uh, somewhat as well because it's very easy to kind of spiritually bypass and say, um, oh, well, you know, focusing on that is just going to put me in a lower vibration, so I can't do that. That is not what I'm talking about, right? I'm talking about knowing the truth, having fear maybe about it, but also having that relationship with your higher power, with divinity, with your own sense of divinity, right? Because the more 
in our human we are, the more cut off we can feel from that sense of spirituality and divinity. And so it can feel hard, it can feel rough, it can feel like, oh, why is this happening, right? Um, and so this is about coming back to that sense of divinity and feeling like, okay, we don't have to do this alone. And this is going to be a big awakening, like for some. And, you know, of course, there's a certain way that I would like to see things go in our world right now. Like, I would love for there to be no war and I would love for, you know, um, things to go a certain way. But I also know that whichever way they go, there's some spiritual meaning behind it. There's some divine plan. Something will come of it. Something good will come of it, even if it doesn't go the way that I feel like would be good for it to go, right? And so it's like coming back to even that, right? It's simple, but coming back to even that can do wonders. Anyway, so this is what I see for the Pisces uh, lunar eclipse happening on September 17th, 2024, around 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let me know how you guys feel about all that below. It's good to be back. And actually, I haven't drawn cards in a while, so let's draw some cards and see how this Pisces lunar eclipse is going to go. And then we will get to the signs. Oh, we have temperance. Definitely a lot of that. <laughs> Moderation. Really moderating where our focus and attention is going. Moderating our energy. Coming back into balance within alchemy. And the wheel of fortune. Wow. I'm going to get one more. Yeah, this is definitely a crazy time. A lot of uh, twists and turns. A lot of ups and downs. Again, like I said, this can kind of feel like a test of faith. Can kind of feel like our faith is a little bit shaken during this during this time. Alrighty, our final card is the King of Swords. So, truth. If we can stay balanced within, if we can balance our emotions, if we can moderate our emotions and the energies within our own lives, during the chaos, when everything is crazy and up and down and left and right, when things are just kind of you know, going chaotic everywhere, then we cut through the BS. We see the truth. We come into the truth of who we are, right? So this is definitely an important message for this Pisces lunar eclipse. We are going to go ahead and briefly go over what this may mean for your rising sign. So definitely stay tuned for that. Timestamps should be listed below. And let's go ahead and get into it. Alrighty, starting with Pisces. So if you are a Pisces rising, this is going to resonate with you most. So Pisces, this lunar eclipse is happening in your sign. This is your first house so if you are a Pisces rising. And that means that this eclipse is really showing you a glimpse of yourself. The things that this eclipse really is bringing to light is really what I said throughout this whole video for you. It's like double true for you because this is happening in your first house. This is really reflecting on yourself, your body, your appearance, your image, how you perceive yourself, and really getting back into alignment with your own internal wisdom with your own internal beliefs and perception and spirituality rather than relying on what other people see or what other people want or what other people are doing or what what other people believe it's like you're really kind of meant to integrate different parts of yourself during this eclipse and this is a, a huge 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 kind of signifier for what's to come once the north node moves into Pisces and we have more eclipses in your sign next year so this is a huge 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 full moon to pay attention to what's going on with you what's going on with your body what's going on with your health potentially what's going on with your appearance these are all topics that are really going to get brought up 
things that need to be transcended, integrated, let go of, surrendered to, detoxed, cleansed, purified. This is really coming back to your sense of self and your sense of dreamy like wonder, right? This is really coming back to um, your own internal wisdom, what's good for you, overcoming different restrictions, difficulties, you know, things that have gone on with this area of your life with yourself, right? Um, so that is what I'm really seeing for you if you're a Pisces rising. Definitely let me know down below if that resonated. And we're going to move on to Aries. So for Aries, this full moon is happening in your 12th house. So this is definitely a very, very spiritual, enlightening eclipse for you. This is really happening to kind of show you what's going on behind the scenes, what's going on behind closed doors if you're an Aries rising. This is really coming in to say, okay, it's time to get rid of some shit. It's time to face some shit. It's time to let go of some shit, right? The 12th house is really about endings, letting go, cleansing things, detoxing things, purging things. You know, it's kind of a time where you are really letting go, you know? You are just really letting the fuck go. You're really, it's a really a time of surrendering, purification. Um, you know, anything that has really been holding you back subconsciously or behind the scenes is really coming up during this eclipse. Um, you could be having a lot of really, really mysterious, uh, vivid dreams with a lot of symbolism about what needs to go in your life. You could be having a lot of dreams about water or the ocean or something like that as well with this, you know, eclipse being in Pisces. What bad habits need to go? What addictions need to go? What so old subconscious beliefs or stories that are really not helping you move forward in your life? Like, what needs to go? What needs to end? You know, um, how can you kind of purge some of these things and and really kind of cleanse your yourself, your life? Um, what spiritual energies are surrounding you, right? What, what spiritual issues have you been having and how can you kind of get back into balance, right? So that is what I'm seeing for you. If you're an Aries rising, definitely let me know down below uh, if that resonates, Aries. And we are going to move on to Taurus. So if you're a Taurus rising, this lunar eclipse in Pisces is happening in your 11th house of friends, networking, um, you know, different things like that, different groups that you like or take interest in, sometimes even like, you know, idols or people in your life that you look up to. You know, this uh, lunar eclipse is shining a really big light on that. And so it's really kind of showing you where you align spiritually within your um, views and within the groups that you belong to, your friend groups, you know, people in your life, your social life, um, you know, what what's going on there that may be maybe spiritually unaligned or out of sync that needs to kind of come back into alignment. Are the people in your life or the people that you're watching online or the groups that you're a part of, whether in person or online, are they aligned with your spiritual beliefs, your spirituality, like, um, you know, your dream, your vision for where you're going in life, your internal compass, right? Um, that's what this is really about for you. It's about really kind of seeing the bigger picture, the bigger vision of where you're going and where you've kind of been a little bit distracted within your priorities or um, within what you've been kind of doing that you feel is important, right? Where you've been a little bit distracted with what's important in your life. And so this is kind of showing you um, a new path or a new vision or something that needs to be uh, realigned in terms of the people in your life. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Taurus. Let me know down below if that's resonating with you. So for Gemini Risings, this uh, lunar eclipse in Pisces is happening in your 10th house. So this is really about your future, your career, your public image, where you're going in life. And is that area of your life spiritually aligned with you and what you want, right? Um, is is your vision for the future, is your vision for where you're going, is um, your public image, your career, your future, is that really aligned with who you are as a person or where you want to be going, right? Um, this could be an eclipse that is really showing you a glimpse of your future quite literally, so really pay attention to what's coming up around uh, this time because this is really quite literally showing us um, 
what is potentially coming up for us um, in the future. Um, so here's the thing, Gemini, this is squaring Jupiter in your sign in your first house. And so there's been a lot of distractions or there's been a lot of contradictions um, going on within yourself that you've been trying to kind of um, rise up from or embrace or integrate within yourself, right? And so you're really kind of learning what your own personal truth is, what your own personal um you know, ideas are, opinions are, right? And how this is correlating with your vision for your future and where you want to go and what you want in your life and how that correlates with your family life, you know, your personal family and home life as well. That's really huge as well. So let me know, Gemini Rising, down below what you're noticing come up, please. And if this is resonating so far, I'd love to know more details about uh, what you are noticing com coming up with this particular full moon eclipse in Pisces. So, Alrighty, moving on to Cancer rising. So Cancer, this lunar eclipse in Pisces is happening in your ninth house. And this is really about your beliefs. <laughs> this is really about your beliefs, whether they're philosophical, you know, religious, you know, things like that. This is really coming to a higher spiritual understanding about what your beliefs, your morals, and values are in terms of the world at large. Um, this could be a strong focus on um, things going on um, you know, in your religion, if you're religious, um, politically, in the world, um, or just in, in a sense of your vision for your own life and where you're going in the world. This could also bring up certain travels um, or certain uh, educational pursuits that you're pursuing right now as well and your vision for those. Do these things align with you uh, spiritually and, and do these things align with what you believe, right? Is this area of your life really in alignment with what you feel is true or what you believe are you like where have you been kind of distracted from your your principles you know the principles that you live by the values that you live by uh, the morals that you live by right and how can you really get back on and in, into alignment with these things so let me know um, how that's resonating with you if you're cancer rising I'd really love to hear your feedback down in the comments alrighty so Leo rising um, this, uh, for my fellow Leo Risings out there, <laughs> this uh, lunar eclipse in Pisces is happening in our eighth house. So this is our house of finances. This is about business, finances, loans, um, you know, any kind of money that we share or get from others, um, any money that we owe or money that's owed to us. So this could definitely be bringing up a lot of financial stuff. Um, but this is also very karmic as well. So it's a very karmic house as well. So again, what we owe or what's owed to us, this could be a huge topic for this full moon eclipse. Um, it could be bringing in kind of a certain focus on where our values are, what are our priorities right now um, in terms of really balancing the scales in our lives, whether it be financially or karmically to some extent. Um, this could be showing us a lot in terms of um, business, in terms of certain baggage that we feel is slowing us down, or um, a sense of where we feel powerless in our life. You know, the eighth house can, can really deal with power exchanges at times too. And with it squaring Jupiter in, in our 11th house, are there certain um, trends or things going on in the world or things going on with other people that have kind of been distracting us, right? Um, and kind of taking us out of our own spiritual beliefs, our own power, our own priorities. Um, you know, where do we need to really focus to make sure that we are prospering, not only physically in a material sense, but also spiritually and um, in terms of our own inner divinity in terms of our own sovereign power, spiritual power, right? Um, so this could also be a grateful moon to get kind of back into um, occult practices, spiritual practices, taboo practices. If maybe you've gotten out of certain, you know, certain practices, this is definitely a time to kind of wake up to what needs to take priority in our lives right now and where we've been distracted, where we've allowed outside forces or outside things, outside topics, outside, um, you know, people, whatever, to kind of distract us or where we're getting distracted by certain contradictions and, you know, polarities within the world rather than kind of coming home to um, 
what really matters to us, right? This is about really kind of finding the meaning in our lives again. Um, so let me know how that's relating Leo Rising uh, down below, my fellow Leo Risings. I'd love to know. And um, we are going to move on to Virgo Risings. So Virgo Risings, this uh, lunar eclipse is happening in your seventh house. Um, this is definitely a huge deal for you if you're a Virgo rising. So this is bringing up a lot to do with relationships, current or past. Um, you know, it could be very karmic relationships as well. Could be bringing up a lot from the past and a lot um, to do with where you want to go moving forward. So I really feel here if you're a Virgo rising, you could definitely be having a lot of messages coming in through dreams, visions, you know, spiritual practices of like, you know, tarot cards or, you know, things like that. There's definitely potentially a lot of synchronicities giving you messages on your relationships. And essentially what I really see here for Virgo Risings is there is like other people in your life are really reflecting back to you certain things that you may need to see within yourself. So if you are kind of focused on other people in your life or the other person in your life, whether it's a person or multiple people, um, there's something they are reflecting back to you that is actually a part of yourself or actually they're mirroring something to you, right? And this usually does happen when you have, you know, the moon in your seventh house. It is mirroring something back to you because the moon is mirroring the sun's light, right? And the sun is in your sign, the moon is in your opposite sign. So it is, you know, you could definitely be seeing a lot of mirroring going on with your relationships or the people in your life or even the people that maybe are on your mind. You know, if you have someone on your mind a lot lately or whatever, there's a reason that person may be coming up, right? Um, so there's a lot going on here if you're a Virgo rising and I'd love to know what you guys are noticing down below. Um, but this is a very karmic full moon. Uh, eclipse for you guys. Definitely bringing up old restrictions, old lessons from the past that could be coming back around. Um, it's definitely showing you new perspectives, new new truths kind of being revealed around this time of what you may need to let go of or what you may need to integrate as a part of you if there's a lot of mirroring going on, right? Um, what you don't have control over, right? Um, what you want in a partnership. And it's like you want that spiritual connection. You want divinity. You want that kind of, you know, energetic connection, right? And so these things are really coming up around this time as well. I'd love to know down below, Virgo Rising, what you are seeing come up. Um, let me know in the comments. And we are going to move on to Libra Risings. So if you are a Libra Rising, this full moon is happening in your sixth house of health um, routines, your job, your work on a day-to-day -day basis. This is kind of like the get your shit together house, right? It's like, all right, where have I kind of gotten off my, gotten off my rocker a little bit, gotten off my routine, gotten away from work. And you're kind of reflecting on a lot of th this area of life are, is your job or your day-to-day -day task or your day-to-day -day routines or, you know, your health, is that an alignment how you want it to be, right? Like that is it in alignment with how you want it, right? Is it in alignment with what you believe, what feels good energetically? Is it in alignment with, you know, your your own sense of spirituality? Does it give meaning and purpose and and, you know, um you know, faith into your life, or is it energetically draining your life, right? Um, so this is a time where you may have felt a little bit off kilter with the sun being in your 12th house, right? You may have needed more rest, or you may have needed, you know, to um, kind of reorganize uh, some other things in your life, but now it's really coming back to, okay, um, what is my vision for my health? What is my vision for my job? What is my vision for my day-to-day -day routines and tasks? And, and is that adding to my vision for what I want in my life? Is that adding to my spiritual wisdom? Is that adding to what I believe? Is that adding to my potential? Um, is that adding to my own sense of spirituality and, and my faith? Are these things adding or helping or aligned with these things, right? So that's what I'm seeing for you if you're a Libra rising. Let me know down below if that resonates for you. I'd really love to hear your feedback. And we are moving on to Scorpio Risings. So for Scorpio Risings, this eclipse is happening in your fifth house of fun, love, children, joy. This is really finding the things that make you feel like a child again, that light you up, that feel good, that feel uh, like 
you know, fun, <laughs> right? And so with this, this eclipse happening here, you know, you could find, you know, spiritual endeavors or creative endeavors, a lot of fun, like things that feed your soul, right? And so it's like, how connected have you been with things that feed your soul lately? Have you been a little bit too practical, too rational, focused on, you know, what's going on with other people or what's going on in the world or what's going on, you know, with friend groups or your social life and not really paying attention to, you know, your own, your own internal sense of spirituality and wisdom and, you know, your soul, like what is feeling good to your soul, right? And so this eclipse is really showing you something, maybe an old interest that you forgot about or an old hobby that you forgot about or an old creative endeavor coming back to fruition, or maybe it's a new one, you know, it's like maybe you, you've, you know, been focused on, um, you know, a certain interest that you've had, or you've joined some groups of different interests that you had, and you've been thinking like, yeah, good for them. That's so cool. I wish I could do that. And this eclipse comes in and is like, well, why can't you, you know, something like that. So let me know how that's relating for you. If you're Scorpio rising, um, I'd love to, to hear your feedback on that. And moving on to Sag risings. So for Sag risings, this eclipse is happening in your fourth house of home and family. So this is your home front. This is really going on in your personal life, you know, things that feel personal. <laughs> um, and so basically with you, uh, the, the eclipse happening in your fourth house, this is definitely kind of pulling you a little bit out of the spotlight and out of the world and out of your career and, and your future and focusing on your future and where you're going in the world and kind of pulling you more into, well, what's going on at home? What's going on with family? What's going on, you know, on the home front, in the personal life, right? This could be bringing up things from the past, um, karmic cycles, you know, truths going on with the with your family. This could be a time, a really great time to take some, you know, take some time to yourself, take some quiet time and really reflect on things. If you've been kind of overcoming challenges or difficulty with home and family, this is definitely a time where you can resolve them, where you can let things go, surrender, integrate, forgive, you know, that's definitely the energy of this full moon eclipse. So let me know down below, Sagittarius, if you are noticing any of that coming up for this full moon. I'd love to hear your feedback. Moving on to Capricorn, this full moon is happening in your third house. So this may not be something that you notice quite as much um, for most of you, but this nonetheless still is happening in your third house. So this is going to be a time where you could definitely notice a lot of synchronicities, a lot of messages, um, a lot of different types of communication coming in for you if you're a Capricorn rising, um, you could really notice a lot going on in your environment. Usually eclipses in the third house can make us feel very busy, can seem like there's a lot going on around us, you know, maybe a lot of we're getting a lot of calls or emails or have a lot of errands or there's just a lot of appointments or things like that happening. Um, this definitely is a great time though and a great event for you Capricorn Risings if you are trying to get creative or get a message out there into the world or become some kind of uh, creator or something like that, right? So it's definitely a very creative full moon eclipse for that. Um, it's definitely great for, um, you know, speaking, communication, and things like that. Um, you know, journaling, all of that. So um, another thing that I'll say here is it's really kind of showing you how to get your environment back in order, back into alignment with something that feels true and right for you, right? So that's something, uh, something else that you could kind of notice coming up here as well. So let me know Capricorn Risings, how that's resonating and what you are seeing come up around this eclipse. I'd love to hear your feedback. So moving on to Aquarius, last but not least, this eclipse is happening in your second house of your priorities. What's important to you, your income, your money, the things that you own. So this is really shining some light on some truth here. Um, are your values, are your morals in alignment um, with your priorities, right? Um, with your finances, are your finances, you know, in alignment with what you believe and what, what's meaningful and purposeful for you? Are your spiritual beliefs in alignment with your finances, with, you know, your money, with your income, all of that, right? With your priorities, you know, the, are, are these things aligned? Are these things syncing up in some way? right? This is really coming back to the your own spiritual wisdom of what's important to you and how to prioritize that in your life, um, regardless of what is going on, 
you know, materially in your life, right? And so the sun being in Virgo in your eighth house is definitely shining this light on what's going on materially in your finances and, and you know, in terms of um, your power and karma, what you owe or what's owed to you. But this eclipse happening in your second is like, okay, well, what are the beliefs? What are the the morals and values and spiritual principles I live by that can help these things, change these things, you know, ignite these things even more, right? And so that is what I'm seeing for you if you're an Aquarius rising. Let me know down below if that is resonating for you. I really, really love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I am back. So expect more videos. <laughs> I love you guys and I will talk to you guys in the next one.